Hello everyone, and welcome to Provenance 2 RPG History of Era. This is an RPG game, and as you can see, there's a pretty cool places out here. Now, to play this on a server with your friends, you will need to follow this tutorial. Um, well, you don't need to if you know how what you're doing, but this is what I recommend. So, Promise to a Stirring Era, it's an RPG, you can just play the game, like I showed you, you just, I didn't even play single player because this uh, mod pack has a server pack, so you don't actually have to go into single player, I just pressed the button and I'm regretting it because now it's preparing for world creation, it's my bad. But as you can see, I had a server up, it's still up, and it is right here. Now, the re the way I set that up is let me just stop the server real quick, um, and cancel play single play creation. So that was the server, right here. It's saving and it's gonna close. Now, what you wanna do is make sure that you have Java seventeen SE seventeen. It will be in the description. Make sure you download the Windows sixty four one, um, if you're on Windows, of course, and then. You want 17 or 18 um, for this version of Minecraft. I recommend 17, it's easier. And then for the fabric launcher, so right here, the installer for 17 is the one you'd grab. You can also grab a, like a slightly older version. I'm currently running the 17.0.13 uh, because I already had Java, but 17.0.15 should work just as fine, if not better. And then for the Minecraft fabric server, which I actually go through with all of you. So we open a new folder, it's empty, right? So close the other two folders. So this is the actual server that's I've had running just now. Let's close that, close out of it. As you can see, there's no server running right now. So what we'll do is we'll go to Ghostforge or wherever your prominence to is. They should usually have a download server pack. If they don't, Go to CurseForge, they do have the button. Just download it, it'll go open. You save the zip file, the zip file appears, right? We can close CurseForge. We take the zip file, we make sure we download the fabric 1.20.1, 1 103. This exact download link will be in the description as a direct download. So you don't have to worry about finding this exact like click, 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 or whatever. Um, because I'll just give you a link that if you click, it'll straight up download this file. Um, for example, when I do this, right, it opens a link. Uh, let me do this, right? This link will be in the description, causing you to instantly download the file um, that you need. Now we take that with Control X or we just drag and drop it. And we have that in our server folder. Uh, where's our server? This is our server folder. This is the existing server, All right? So now we open this zip file that they gave us with the server pack. Make sure it says server pack made by server pack creator 713 by griefed, right? Now there is a couple of things I wanna warn you about. And the reason I'm warning you is some of this is very advanced stuff that not everyone is going to understand. So we have the fabric server in there ourselves. We did, we did that not because it needs to be done, but because we need it. At least I needed it because the um, pre-made server pack didn't run for me. Even though I have everything I'd need, as the variables.txt would suggest right here at the bottom, it says you need to have, um, or is it Java? And it says Java 17 right here, right? So in theory, if I click this thought.bat that they've made, which always check files before you run them, if you understand what they mean. So this thought.bat is gonna run this thought.ps1, which is a PowerShell program. It's it could, let's just say this one's safe. I'm not going to explain the entire thing because it's going to take 10 more minutes. 
this one's safe. But if I were to run this dot dot bat, it does this and it gives me an error, right? And then once to install something to install Java, I already have everything running the way it needs to for myself. So I'm gonna control C and close out of that start dot bat. And I'm just taking how to run and dot down to variables dat and I'm deleting all of that. I don't need this on my PC. I don't need them to do it for me. I can do it myself. If you wanna follow that, you can agree to have Java installed and use their systems. On the other side, if you're just like me, you don't want to trust other people to do it for you, make a text document, name it start.bat, make sure that .txt is gone, it'll change, edit this, and then we are going to be putting this in there. This will be in the description. It's the exact spot where you've installed your Java 17 that you're linking it to. Then we're going to give it six gigs. We're going to tell it to be running and executing a jar file. This is the jar file and we don't need the GUI. And then we're putting a pause. If there's any errors, it'll stop and show us instead of just close. All right. Now, prominence to RPG. We've taken the config, default config, modern fix, mods and schematics out of that zip file. We don't need that zip file anymore. And now we just run the start dot bat and it'll start downloading the server and all the stuff it needs. After a while, it'll hit a snafu because we haven't accepted the EULA. And this is something that we can easily do by just opening a text file and telling it to be true. But this specific server somehow, I don't know if it's new from Minecraft or if it's Fabric or who did it, but earlier today, when I was testing this, it actually asked me to, uh, about the EULA in the server console, which surprised me because normally it just arrows out going, hey, you didn't accept the EULA, you got to accept the EULA. And then this one actually just went, hey, the EULA isn't accepted. Do you want to accept it? And then you just typed that you accept it. And then the console just keeps going because it accepted the EULA for you. As you can see here, Filled your EULA by answering true to this prompt, you're indicating your agreement to Minecraft's EULA. So if we just type true right there, we already accepted Minecraft's EULA. We don't even have to close out of the console, go into the EULA.txt right here, edit this, and tell it to be true. The client already did it for us. Now, the only thing that that means is that the server just runs instantly. It's completely booting up right now. Like, I don't have to do anything else for this server to be running uh, locally. If you want to make it public to your friends, it's just going to take a bit. But if you want to have friends be able to join it, go to my other tutorial about how to use playit.gg. It will port forward for you. Well, it, it'll tunnel for you. It doesn't actually port forward for you. And then you can have your friends join through the IP that they give you. Um, that way, this is all you had to do. You can start right now. Now, if you do want to make sure that everything's exactly how you want it to be, we will have to stop the server and I'll show you in the other server because this one's still booting up. And we're going to edit the server properties after it's done. But just ignore that it's not done yet because um, this one is the new one and I'm changing the old one, the one I showed you that I was playing on real quick so that you can see exactly what I mean. Uh, I don't want to be in that program. I want to be editing this in Notepad. Let me just open this with Notepad. So now it's more in line with what you'll be seeing, I reckon. So first things first, we always want to have our server MOTD be a little bit different. So in this case, instead of a Minecraft server, we're just going to do a prominence server right and then for difficulty easy you can tell it to be hard i don't like that's up to you and your friends um allow flight i always want that to be true because my friends they're not going to be cheating and i want to make sure that they don't get kicked when they're flying an elytra or if there's any creatures in this mod pack that you can fly i don't want them to be kicked for using the actual mod pack the way it's intended right um, if you have friends that are semi-famous and you're afraid people might find the IP, you can turn this to true. So people can't actually hover on the 
bar right here and see who's online. See, this one's how they have it hidden. So it just says there's 33 people online, someone and 32 more instead of whatever, right? So if I were to log on to this, that's my new server. That's the server we just created. It doesn't have these console fire, the server conference here, but so spawn protection, you want to put that to zero and that's mostly what you want to change. Um, and we can close the server properties. Now we're loading into a new Minecraft server. This is going to take a bit. It might even lag uh, a little because the server's generating chunks and everything, right? See, it'll tell you can't keep up. And that's just because I'm hosting the server on the same PC as I'm playing. So normally when you first join a world, it'll come up with a message regarding uh, pressing N for your talent tree, pressing R to, to roll, and pressing C to zoom in, right? And they'll have a couple buttons where you can join their Discord and stuff. Now, this is problems too. It's a bit loud with the background noise, I'll be completely honest. Birds are a uh, happy bunch. <laughs> Let's turn that down. And I hope y'all enjoy the server that you've just made for you and your friends. And yeah, enjoy. I'll see y'all in the next video.